My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Against the Storm. In the last episode, we raised the successful settlement of Fital. We also got ourselves some currency which we used to build. Let me have a quick look here. The second level of the Obsidian Archive, giving us 10% more Citadel resources whenever we finish the settlement. So it seems to me the most intelligent thing for us to do at this point. Actually, hang on, do we? Ah, uh, I was wondering. Yeah, because we definitely had more resources than that. We also have the ability to upgrade hubs to the neighborhood level at this point and establish trade routes with other nearby settlements. That's going to be incredibly important. I'm going to try and make like a trade heavy building settlement. Yeah, let's try and do that. So trade heavy. Well, if I can establish trade routes with nearby settlements, I'm going to want to be relatively near Fatal. Otherwise, I'm going to have to be sending things long distance and paying additional provisions to do so. I mean, I can go to a Royal Woodlands, but it feels like there's a little blah, you know? The little blah there is the, the additional effect here is exclusively just Gift of the Woodlands. The, ro uh, the Royal Woodlands are very lush and rich in timber. Trees give more wood. That's it. Natural resources of meat, berries, insects, sea marrow, vegetables, mushrooms. Okay, so an herbalist's camp would be particularly good there. We're being offered the ability to take six beavers in. Obviously, beavers seem pretty good when I intend to do a lot of woodworking. But I intend to do a lot of woodworking on pretty much every single map, so... Maybe I should dissociate that, being such a strong relationship in my mind. What do we have on the other side of Fatal? Other side of Fatal, we have Gathering Knowledge. The Marchlands are a gatherer's paradise. Gathering speed is increased by 10% for every two workers assigned to gathering camps. Interesting. There's also Giant Organisms. The Marshlands are home to enormous life forms. Giant resource nodes can be found in the Forbidden Glades, and each glade will have a different one. Yeah, I mean, look, if I've just been slagging off this previous area as not being good enough for my the highfalutin standards here, why don't we just go to the one that has slightly more modifiers on it? I'm going to take some wood into the area. Let's also look at our caravans. Um, okay, so gathering camps. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. I don't know. Maybe I don't even want beavers. Maybe I just want a bunch of people. People do gathering good. People gather goodly. Yeah. Let's get the people out there on the camp. Um, couple eggs with them as well. And we'll embark. Okay, so we can see some of our forest mysteries. The negatives are going to be stacking up in the storm season. Uh, negative four to global hostility. Oh, off-road speed is decreased by 30%. Only active in Storm and active from Hostility 1 and up. Villagers have a 5% chance of perishing every 15 seconds because of the hailstorm here. So we can prevent that with some housing. And Cloudburst will take one coat from the warehouse. And if we can't provide it, we'll give Global Resolve negative 10 for 30 minutes. Okay, so it can be pretty bad, but ideally we never get up to Hostility 3, so we never really have to deal with it. Read more about trade routes. Once you have a trading post in your settlement, you can access trade routes. This will allow you to export goods and other nearby settlements, sorry, two other nearby settlements in exchange for the main currency of the realm, Amber. And when you look at the nearby neighbors, you will see what they are willing to buy from you. And offers change with the season, depending on the biome that a settlement has been built in. Oh, interesting. So a settlement that I previously built in Royal Woodlands is probably unlikely to ask me for wood. Uh, three main parameters to keep in mind. Payment, how much the settlement is willing to pay. Travel cost, how much it will cost to send a convoy. This is why I wanted to be relatively nearby my previous settlement. And travel time, how much time it will take to traverse that trade route. Neat. Each successful trade will also make them like me more, and the more they like me, the better their offers will be in the future. Just to quickly summarize and jump past that. So we have Leech Broodmother here asking us to get a Trapper's Camp. I am very, very happy to get a Trapper's Camp. Can I have one in the immediate blueprints, please? Oh. Not so much. 
we do also have a lizard with us. I believe we got eight people as well as two just settlers. So we got another person and our first lizard. It's good to see that we have lizards, especially because we do have the leech broodmother. So putting the lizards in the trapping camp in order to, you know, tame animals. It's exactly what they're good at. Uh, leather worker, brickyard, and weaver. I'm so far leaning brickyard. Giving us the ability to crystallize dew as well as create bricks. I can create the crystallized dew just using the rain. And I can create bricks using clay and stone. But that's what you always create bricks with. So it's just more efficient brick creation. I don't want to take it just yet. What I'm going to start off with is building up a little bit of a safe opener. Ooh, big shelter as well. Ooh, big shelter. Okay, so if I can house enough people, I can quickly raise my resolve. I don't really need to raise my resolve just yet. Okay, so let's focus on cutting through to a big old terrifying, dangerous glade here. This one first, please. Immediately through yourself. And also, I'll speed up time, and I think gonna get a second woodcutter's camp acting at the exact same time to open in the opposite direction. I want to establish additional settlements really, really quickly here. When I say settlements, what I'm talking about in here is hearths. Uh, settlements on the main map is what I should actually be using, so I should really differentiate that nomenclature. So, hang on. These are little, 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 little guys, little campy guys. And then outside, it's uh, settling guys. There we go, it's all clear now. Let's get some woodworkers. Thank you much, Lee. I mean, I could start collecting some stone here. Otherwise, I just have three people kind of loose in the base. I mean, those three people loose in the base. Let's get them to construct some shelter. And then... A couple more paths. Just start districting out this area. And if I also just create four normal little comfort decorations here, I should, in theory, be able to immediately advance this area into a... a what's the second level hub into something into neighborhood? Can't remember the second level again. Oops. Ooh. Silent looting. Your scouts have learned how to be cautious when opening abandoned caches. E uh, every opened cache lowers hostility by 15 points. Or cannibalism gain 30 meat every time a villager dies or leaves. I'm going to take the silent looting. Uh, I'm going to need to be able to fund my opening of all of those caches, which is going to be difficult. Unless I get, like, a carpenter or something like that early on. Someone who can actually create simple tools. Until then, let's just let the simulation run. Okay. First off, ooh, a grill. That's going to be really good for us. So the grill has the ability to create three-star skewers, uh, which are quite popular with the lizards. Uh, as well as some copper bars, as well as ale at a lower rate. I mean, I'm probably not going to salvage this, like, early, but I'm not dismayed to see it. Up in the corner here, we see some coal as well as some copper deposits that we can get out with a mine. Neat. There's a medium abandoned cache, which could give us some education as well as some herbs and vegetables. Eh, probably going to go for the Queen's Grace from that one, to be entirely honest. And then here's our event, the Ancient Shrine. I do not yet have the ability to solve this. The easiest way to solve that would probably be packs of provisions. Looking at all the different resources it can take. Fabric, that would be very expensive and timely for us to make right now. Same with the infused tools and the simple tools. In fact, we can't even make those. Same with the cosmetics and the incense. We can make the packs of provisions. And it would not be that difficult. And also, I do need to start making packs of provisions soon as well. I did say I wanted to make this a little bit of a trade hub of a town, right? So... 
let's get ourselves a trader. There's a trading post. We'll follow that up with a makeshift post. And a crude workstation. There we go. Also have a look at our orders. Ooh, yeah, we already have 35 parts easily. So this would just give us villages move 10% faster on roads as well as 10 stone. Or I could try and make a couple more of these packs in order to get two perks. The perk for increased fabric production as well as the perk for increased grain production. I suspect fabric and grain aren't going to be primary crops for me. I'm going to take basic logistics here. Wow, I actually don't have that much. Hilarious. Uh, I definitely have enough people to immediately get the help from the queen. So we have at least six humans for 30 seconds. That'll give us some mushrooms as well as additional mushroom growth as well as the small farm. Giving us a farming blueprint without requiring me to choose it from the actual... Uh, the actual blueprint choosing level, I mean, that's that's valuable. I mean, also, again, it's a thing that immediately completes itself. Simple tools. Five simple tools for getting my 30 basic resources here in the planks, fabric, and bricks versus four provisions and crops for 10 amber, 20 grain, and four villages. I will need additional villages. Simple tools are difficult for me to get. I am additionally making provisions and crops at the moment so I can easily kind of just extend to this. I am making a trading post so I'm going to have the ability to utilize this amber quite effectively. It's delivery, definitely. Let's have a look back at our blueprints. Definitely feeling good about getting the brickyard now. Is there any influence on whether or not I would want the fabric here? So, currently, my mission here will give me grain from the small farm. That is kind of unfortunate because I did just turn down the ability to get increased grain production. Let's actually quickly do some stuff in the recipe tab here. Thank you, by the way. I've been setting production limits individually in each building. There is the ability to set the global versions of them here. So I'm going to say to the provisions, I need four of them for the delivery. And I need another five of them for the event. So let's make nine. And then for crops, I only need four of you at any one time at the moment. And then all the rest of that can just be filled. Great. Humans done. Let's get help from the queen. I mean, obviously, I'm immediately going to want to turn this into a actual farming area. So let's start winding out this area so that I can actually make space to... Also, not for nothing, leech broodmothers up here in the corner with 60 charges of meat in them. 100% chance to have leather, 60% chance to have another leather, 20% chance to have an egg. Yep. I want a trapper's camp as soon as I can possibly find one. Just means I need to start actually picking some of these, uh, <laughs> some of these blueprints. It doesn't really make sense, to be fair, for me right now to pick a blueprint that I wouldn't really be able to create. Like, the closest I'm able to make is the leather worker, and I would need to still make fabric in order to create it. And then what's it doing for me? Making water skins and fabric? Things that I don't currently yet need? I'm going to hold off on making that decision as long as I possibly can before it starts. Or at least until I know it's going to be relevant enough to invest in, you know. Let's take down that tree so that I can actually complete that circuit there. Ooh, second dangerous glade. Mmm, this one's going to be difficult. I can't make oil, incense, or scrolls very effectively. I'm going to have to start picking some of my... Some of my reputations here. I will take the brickyard first. There's the trapper's camp that I need, so I'm taking that. Brewery versus Claudio versus Rain Mill. So Rain Mill would give me the ability to make scrolls. However, I'm making them out of leather or wood. I'd probably use the wood, but that's a really lossy transaction, so 
I wouldn't be able to make planks for a while. And uh, we'd need to make it out of wine or pigment as well, which I can't make any wine or pigment yet. Oh, boy. Claudio, what do you... Yeah, you use the same... Use the same for the creation now. Well, boy, howdy. I'll tell you, this building is not a great choice. The buildings that are currently being offered to me. The one that I want to take the most is the rain mill so that I can make flour. Because I have grain. I have grain production, courtesy of my small farm. So if I can make flour, I can easily fulfill, like, pie requirements. Because that's, you know, flour and meat. And I have a lot of meat around the camps. I'm going to take the rain mill. Hopefully my next one fixes my problems. This has not fixed my problems. Herbs, berries, and mushrooms. I mean, I know an herbalist camp is useful around here, right? The mushrooms in particular demand it. I mean, it's going to be what I take. That, hmm, this has left me a little short here. Can get 10 stone from finishing basic logistics there, which will finish extremely soon. Okay, if I complete this event over here, 30 coal, archaeological tools for 20 pottery every time we find a new glade, as well as two fire, uh, wildfire essences for creating new hearths. Okay, what happens if I fail the Forsaken Crypt? All of this, everything that I've done recently is in service of trying to find a way to actually complete the Forsaken Crypt. But what if I can't? Forsaken must be given back. All stored amber and wine will be lost. Okay, if I track when that's going to occur, I can just spend my amber in time. I don't have wine. Uh, and cleanup duty is one impatience point. Legitimately? I could totally leave that for a while. That's not as scary as it seemed. The kiln. Well, we've got to get a couple people in the kiln. Uh, can you rebuild that, like, immediately? Because if this is running and we are actually creating coal, 10 wood for 5 coal gives us ridiculous returns in terms of energy everywhere else, basically. Yeah, absolutely, you'll investigate that, please. Okay, as soon as we get through this storm... Wait, is this storm? This isn't storm, this is drizzle. Oops. I wanted new people to come to the camp. Okay. It's been a while since we found camps, actually, as well. Clearance year one. Uh, everyone's going quite well. There we go, the kiln's working. I will... Uh, okay, we've already got you in the ancient hearth, that's fine. Um, I'll staff one person in the kiln. And I don't really want to create production limits for... Actually, you know what? I won't put a person in the kiln yet. I'm, I'm happy to have it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, that's blocked there. How about over here? A lot of the best positions for things right now are blocked. I need this trading post to actually get constructed. Maybe I should take a couple people off of working as woodcutters at the moment. Still need some building done. In fact, just by raising the hub here to an encampment, the plus two to global resolve, I've managed to get the lizards above into high resolve and high spirits, 
So we're going to be earning a little bit of grace over time. Let's have a look at the trade routes. So the smoldering city is asking us for packs of trade goods. I can trade them uh, two packs of trade goods as well as two packs of provisions for the travel cost to get there. That's the amount of time it would take. And then they would give me four in return. I could also increase this offer up to a total of five times if I really wanted to double down on it. Uh, Fital is asking for... Fital is asking for coal, which I can certainly provide. Once you build a train post, the trader will visit you periodically. You can barter with them, and if they're happy with your proposal, the bar will turn green at the bottom and you can confirm the transaction. You can also attempt to... Uh, when there's no trader in town, you can find out when the next one arrives. They can be attacked and robbed. To do so, you use the sword icon, but doing so will have severe consequences. I don't intend to navigate those just yet. I would like to actually create a trade hub this time. Uh, okay, basic logistics has come through. There's our next reputation point. Bakery, provisioner, and cookhouse. So a provisioner is actually a really, really, really good thing to get here, unfortunately. Yeah. I say unfortunately because it also creates flour and it would have been a really good way to get flour. In fact, like, you know, the bakery is here. This is a really good way to get biscuits as well as pie. Great ways to use the flour that I've started to generate. But a provisioner can create the packs of provisions that then you want to utilize to actually ship things to other towns. Uh, I'm going to take the provisioner and be sad about it, I think. Yeah. I think that's the most strategic play to make there, is be sad. Wow. I actually might not be able to prevent the ancient shrine event over here. So we were pretty much guaranteed to get this done in time. Oh, and then I staffed people in the wrong building initially as well, and then they're building other things at a higher priority than the pack. Yikes. Come on. Took one and a half minutes to do it once we actually deliver these backpacks. Come on, someone delivers. Come on! Oh, why do you have to take a break right now? So we can see these people coming all the way out here. Oh, yeah, we, we haven't got enough time. The threat's actually going to enact itself first. That's going to kill five random villagers. And we're missing by eight seconds. You can definitely come back from this. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's not a problem whatsoever. But this hurts my soul, certainly. <laughs> I was trying to run it so close. That's so much productivity that dies there. Oh, uh, boy. Well, a lot of people just died. Yikes. Let's do what we can. I'm... Oh, boy. A lot of buildings are going to go unstaffed for a long time here. I don't think it's going to be reasonable for me to have a second woodcutter. Heck, I might not really be able to afford more than two people doing woodcutting at any one time. Suddenly, the negatives up here are even worse, possibly? Just because it was fine when it was compounding a bad situation, but the situation wasn't bad. But now, it is compounding a situation that actually is bad to begin with. Oof. Oh, Firekeeper missing as well, yikes. Oh, we don't even have anyone to do the 
jump. Okay, well, uh, makeshift post. That's Guess you'll give up your space. Time to welcome some new people. Strange roots spread across the land in rooty ground. Wood production's increased by plus one, but harvesting and planting are 25% slower. No. I'm going to take every two newly completed dangerous and forbidden glade events lower the hostility by 50. And then whichever of these is more people. Well, neither of these is more people, but one of them is beavers people, which is some people who may help me cut down the trees. Oh, yeah. Which will have to be good enough. I don't even have enough people for this to be considered a encampment anymore. It got downgraded. Yikes. Alright. Let's throw a big path through there. How many are... No one's working this at the moment. It's fine. I don't need to immediately work that. That kiln, though, is a different story. I would really like to get some coal. Go to our recipes limit and set coal maximum to 25 at any one period of time. I'm also going to set uh, production limits to all of the primary construction materials here in planks, fabric, and bricks, giving each of them a maximum of 10, just so that if I don't watch them too closely, I still don't end up with far too many of them. And then flour, we'll put that to 25. Those numbers aren't ultra important as much as they represent that I don't want the villagers just making too much of that resource because I don't believe that I'm going to be doing anything with the excess of those resources at any one period of time. A trader has arrived in old Faluth. Take a look at my wares, Viceroy. You won't find better quality materials anywhere else in the kingdom. Um... Eh, I mean, look, you got some simple tools, and that would really, really, really bail me out right now. But I can't afford them. I also can't really afford to actually send provisions anywhere. Getting two crystallized dew for every ten berries you produce. Yeah, I really can't afford anything while I just need to get more people, so uh, we're just going to be struggling up against the wall for a while here. Mmm, this rewards people. Three lizards join the settlement when I pack up enough provisions. Neither of these reward people. This is difficult. Meat diet. Fulfill your... Villagers need for eating jerky 40 times, and then we'll get 10 jerky for every pie we produce. Every 10 pie we produce, rather. Although there's also sacrificed 20 oil in the hearth, as well as 20 coal, in order to get increased coal production. Uh, old manuscripts detailing how to burn rights longer, and all fuel recipes are 25% faster. I'm going to take the meat diet, because I can already start building jerky. It's not the grill, no. It's the kiln. So here we have the option to use either five wood or one coal. However, we know that five coal is ten wood in this same process here in the kiln. So if I'm using a coal instead of a wood, really, I should be using two wood. Or one coal. Making coal more efficient. So we'll be using coal here. Uh, sure, just make that jerky, that's fine. I mean, I want to put another person in there, but I'm not so certain I can afford to. Pack of provisions as well. So for pack of provisions, yeah, I do just need to get this as quickly as possible. Do 
because that represents getting some more people in the camp. I mean, the same with the pack of crops as well. So four in the pack of crops. Maybe that'll actually put us just completely back on the right path if we get both of those. Maybe. First off, let's get three of the lizards, and then I'm going to get lizards fulfilling all of the roles where they will have additional resolve here. That will also increase our resolve with the lizards, giving us some more grace with the queen over time. Clothier, bakery, and leather worker. I'll take the bakery because I don't yet have a way to make pie and I do need to be able to make pie for the Sahilda book to pay off. Ooh, right. I have not made any planks. I keep forgetting how few people we have. Just gonna turn off fabric right now. And brick production even. Come on, make those crops. And then deliver them as soon as possible, because that makes more people, and then I can tell those people to do more things, and then those things can turn into more people. And so on and so forth. We're being offered general utility. So let's see, two of the folk here do like religion. And the beavers do like education. So I could fulfill everyone's wills with a temple. I would also have the passive effects of good sacrifice and hearth burn 25% longer. Eh, that's not something I utilize super early on often. If I take the clan hall, though, all camp productions is increased by 50%. Bonus does not affect woodcutters camps, though. Yeah, I mean, gatherers were supposed to be really big, right? This gives us brawling for one character and religion for two characters. Unfortunately, it doesn't give anything to the beavers. And then Luxury, that only gives things to the Beavers. Although it also has Guild House, which is traders arrive 50% faster and gain a stack of wealth effect, plus one to go will resolve every time you sell goods worth 60 amber. Well, dang. That actually does seem pretty important for us now. I'm going to take the Guild House. I want to make a trade hub of a town. It needs 40... It needs 40 planks to make. Okay, so that's happening later. That's an investment for the future. Okay, we have run out of meat, so I do need to get a trapper's camp down. Okay, I can't get a small half in any good position over here, so I should just try and... Position my camp as best I can, and then move on. There we go, that's good enough. Make sure it has a path back to civilization. Now we have five people unhoused here at the moment. So if I actually build one, and then two, I now have the ability to turn this into a neighborhood as long as I put down four more comforts and four aesthetics. Let's just get a lush garden back here. And some... some structural pipes. Yeah. For... Well, I actually do want to break up there later. Uh, sh sure. What I'm actually going to do is just create a little fenced garden here. 
it's a lawn more than a garden in that there's only one plant growing in it and it's the floor. Let's get some lizards on the job over there. Uh, the grill still not yet created. But I could start salvaging it now and I will. At some point, I appear to have decided to just live with the Forsaken Crypt. I don't want to. Don't get me wrong. It's just how it's going at the moment. Okay. I'm gonna try and get those people into a small farm. What can I do today to get you into a small farm? Making food for the people. Couple more paws, fill out that area a wee bit. Alright. This bad translation rate for planks is really harming us a bit at the moment, unfortunately. It feels like there's not an incredible amount I can do right now. Provisions. Need additional meat coming in. We're getting a wee bit, but could certainly use more. You know what? I've definitely got woodcutters who are not beavers at the moment. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> Me. So there's anyone suboptimal in their job at the moment? Not particularly, unfortunately. Some things to fix. Thankfully, the storm is about to end. We're about to get a couple more people. Farmers have a plus 25, sorry, plus 75% chance of double yields under the effect of biscuits. Humans do eat biscuits, and humans are who I would have doing that. Fungal guide. Ancient mushroom farming techniques are described within. Mushroom production increases by plus one for every 25 times it's produced. Uh, there are mushrooms on this map, and I already do have the herbalist's camp unlocked, so I would be able to loot those. Uh, the double farming seems to me maybe a good idea. I'll take that. Also, people. This one has four people. That was the only reason. <laughs> That's all it needed to be. Do I have the ability to construct literally any of these right now? Scrolls, oil, incense, infused tools, subtle tools. Scrolls? Yes, but I would have to build the rain mill to do it, and then I need pigment, and I can't build pigment. Okay, yeah, so no is the answer, actually. Oh, boy. This, uh... Woo. Yikes. Did I make any provisions yet? Nope. Alright. Where am I using all of my meat? decent amount of it's becoming jerky. But I feel like I'm not fulfilling anyone's jerky diet. Maybe the jerky deliveries have just begun? Yeah, the jerky deliveries have just begun. Okay. As long as it's actually making the thing. Okay, now we have an ancient hearth that is a hub neighborhood here. The neighborhood, some viceroys say aesthetics don't matter out in the wild. But you know better than that. Plus 10% to global production speed and the ancient's resi uh, resistance to corruption is increased by 150. do want a third trapper's camp down. Or my first herbalist camp. 
Yeah, let's get the first herbalist camp, I think, actually. And then put it... There. So this woodcutter's camp probably needs to move. I don't know if I want to break into another area while I have so few high-tier resources. Like, coal is a pretty high-tier resource that we have access to. Ish. When I say high-tier, I mean sometimes it's used as an event. Uh, the solver. How am I going to encourage more people? without needing to use more people to get those people in the first place. Just not so sure. Oh boy! Bunch more impatience is rolled in from our forsaken crypt. Noblest's camp. Plus three to mushroom productions. Mushrooms after rain. Interesting. Also, there's the fungal growth. Gathering knowledge and everything. Oh, let's, uh, let's up your mushroom priority. I want you to focus exclusively on mushrooms if you're possibly capable of doing so. Complete six trade routes to get 10 amber and 15% faster arrival of traders. I'll take it. I really hope I can do it. Ooh, faster jerky production, as well as newcomers for producing some luxury goods. Can I make luxury goods at the moment? Nope. Not just yet. Let's also have a look at if I can make any provisions yet. Yes. I'm gonna store one person making those provisions. Hopefully, if we just let the simulation run for a little bit now. Increases global food production speed by 20%, the Viceroy Survival Guide. I mean, I can't really afford to buy anything from you. What I need to focus on is my ability to meet one of these production requirements later on. Like, I could sell a huge amount of leather here. 45, get 15 amber back for it. I just need five provisions in order to be able to actually do that in the first place, so... Please make some provisions. One day I might even just be able to buy the simple tools to fix the problems that keep coming up. I'm, I'm mortified about this, by the way. I'm not happy about this. I, I, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> And it happened over here, ages ago. I, I know, I'm trying to rectify it, don't worry. Uh, fine. Okay, I've got enough packs of provisions, I can actually deal with the leather, let's sell it. Six minutes to actually get that to go through, though. It's going to be a while until we really get any payoff from that. Hmm. In the meantime, maybe I should just make a better path for the... the folk who are coming up here consistently. Actually, it's more something like that that they might want. And then this goes across there, up, and across. Got a couple free workers who can spare the time to help put this together. Okay, we've 
and another. Smokehouse and kiln. So we already have a kiln built. Smokehouse is way better jerky production. It could also create incense. That's important. There's also scribe that can create simple tools. Simple tools are created out of copper bars or crystallized dew. We can actually create copper bars, so we can start making tools. The smokehouse, though, gives us the best jerky production as well as the ability to make incense. Unfortunately, we don't have any of the things that would make incense. Hmm. Taking the smokehouse still. Oil, simple tools. Hmm. I have a couple ideas for how I might try and avoid losing still. I'm not going to play all of them straight to the chest. I, I intend to allow the new trader to arrive and then leave my active trade route down here, not collecting the reward from it so that it can't get destroyed and then collect the reward and immediately buy things from the trader in order to try and fix one of these. It's a plan to try and solve it in eight and a half minutes. It is not great. But ever since a certain uh, carrots early on, we've had to deal with choosing the least not great option. Work safety guide gives every five villages with the need for education filled uh, grant global production speed increase of 25%. Um, yeah, Guildhouse is not for education, unfortunately. You can see the content of undiscovered glades, but discovering dangerous or forbidden glades kills one villager. I can't take that. I'm taking work safety guide. I cannot kill any more of my villagers. I do not have enough villagers to kill. Uh, okay, let's take a couple of people there. The crude workstation has run out of the need to make any more planks at this point. Use some leather to make some fabric. Clay to make bricks. Yeah, sure. Let them do the feather and the feather. Sorry, the fabric and that. Make some crops. I don't know if I want to proactively make any packs of crops there. No, more than that, I would like to get... Trapper's actually working on the Trapper projects over there. Um, I mean, this can be a lot of production of coal very easily. Hmm. There's eggs down here. I almost want to get more Trapper's camps up here. We still don't have... We still don't have many lizards that aren't actually already employed in scavenging trade. And while I do want woodcutters still working, they will need the wood that they are continuing to generate. I don't really want to break into another glade at this point. Is that still true? Maybe it's glade time. Let's give a thought to the possibility that maybe it's glade time. Oh, that effect's gonna pop off again. Hmm. What if one of the other glades actually helps me resolve it? 
I mean, like, I could get the oil to fix it from this medium event in cache, but unfortunately I can't open that cache in the first place because I still can't get the tools for it. Maybe I should have just leapt on taking the ability to create those tools much earlier on. Pack of provision, a lot of leather still. Could sell them 51 with 9. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Second trade route underway. Trade route for the first one is completed. I'm not going to turn it in just yet because I've got 36 seconds until all of my money disappears again. Do I have any money at the moment? No. Thankfully. Okay, that just went off. Now let's turn in meat diet, getting the Sahilda book as well as a bunch of food resources. We'll trade this in. And then you arrive in... Oh. Yeah, 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 it still arrives before the next trigger of the Forsaken Crypt. We're all good. This trapper's camp is done, so I will now move it joyfully over to join the other. And I will instruct it to prioritize meat over eggs. Because the eggs are way down here, and I want to collect them later. kind of back on track. Not much fabric's getting created, but there doesn't need to be much created at any one point in time here. Got that back, got that back. I almost feel like I... don't really have control over any of my endgame resources right now. I can bake. Let's start making jerky faster and better. And let's also start baking some goods for everyone to eat. That's where we need to be. And in fact, I'm also going to put a stonecutter's camp down here to start clearing out the deposit behind it. Let's take y'all off. Oh, did Okay, good. I don't have people in the cage. It looked like maybe I had people standing there. Just idling forever. It would have been terrifyingly, terrifyingly embarrassing. Uh, okay, coal's being kept at a reasonable limit. And yeah, jerky's being created. All's good up there. Obviously now it immediately needs to stop as no longer jerky time up there. In fact, I may be able to unemploy one of you, or redistribute you rather down here, where you will not only have a specialization bonus, so you're proficient here, but you're also comfortable here. So you've got 5 to the resolve as well as 10% to doubling your yield. And... Let's tell you how to make some jerky. Can I get a second half down now as well? Yeah, that one's so far out there. And this one would need to be... I mean, I could. Yeah, fine. We'll place my second half down. Just been umming and ahhing over it for a really long period of time, kind of hemmed in on edges by not having simple tools, but I can't wait forever. Okay, warehouse flips around. Let's get some relevant pathing created. 
Some relevant housing as well. Uh, I kind of want to make two big shelters. Hmm. Yeah. Let's try something like this. Got about eight free builders to go and create that. So I don't really immediately need to employ everyone. Couple more orders to pick. Uh, need for leisure fulfilled 15 times. Sorry, 14 times gives us access to the cellar so we can make wine and pickled goods. Wine is what they use to make uh, luxury and we did take the guild hall. But I also didn't take any way to fulfill people's leisure, so maybe that's gonna be too difficult. Uh, 15 aesthetics decorations would give us 15 amber, 30 dew, as well as plus two to berry production. We do have the herbalist camp, so we can make berries. I'll take that. We're also gonna be on our way to doing that regardless, because I already need to create those. Uh, 20 luxury goods and 24 farm fields as well as 20 crops in order to get plus three to global resolve and four new villages. That sounds right. Uh, that sounds about our tempo. Whoa, hello. Bathhouse. <gasps> we can actually just get cleanliness and regular baths and good health from this already. Actually, none, yeah, none of y'all care about cleanliness. So we will miss out, if I don't take this, on the plus 25% global production. But... We could also just get the pigment. And the pigment would make the scrolls and the scrolls would solve this finally. Also apparently an event in here. Ah, a living matter. Sure, send two people at that to solve it. While we're working this, cooked and raw food is disappearing at a rate of two every second. Sorry, every 10 seconds. Uh, and people are getting negative three global resolve as well as living matter will clump in other areas if I leave it unattended. Sure, let's get that resolved as quickly as possible. Also move the woodcutter's camp over to start opening up the area that I'm going to put another farm down upon. Another hearth would actually fit up here pretty easily. Try to arrive, Jorg. Hello, Jorg. Uh... You are not selling simple goods, unfortunately. Harvesting crops is 25% faster for 10. That does sound good. To me. Ancient tablet. Don't have any of those to sell. Coal. I do have coal to sell. But I can only actually really sell one. What with all the provisions I don't have. Uh, I'm going to take the obsidian sickles, and I'm also going to take as much meat as you'll give me for five. And then start trying to pack up more provisions. Okay, that's the crude workshop. Start trying to pack up some more provisions. Yeah, package the eggs. So currently I've got a lot of excess grain and mushrooms. So what I really need is a way to utilize those very effectively. This rain mill is probably a big priority in terms of doing that because it can turn either mushrooms or grain into flour. And we do have a bakery down, don't we? We do indeed. Where is the bakery? 
Not one of these big shelters I made over in the other area. No, 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 no. Ah, yes, it's down here. So I can make pie. And that's fine because pie makes jerky from Sihilda's recipe as well. Which means I could actually pump the brakes on making jerky if I made enough pie. Big problem there being that we're using the eggs to make the provisions at the moment. So I would be using meat to make the pie. This is just going to require a lot of meat production over time as well. Do I have a ranch? No. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. These. These need to finish soon as well. Let's have a look. Where is it? The mushroom thing we got earlier on. The super early mushroom thing. The one that makes mushrooms ridiculous. Where is it? Is it gone? Did I not take it? There was an effect that gave you plus one to mushrooms gathered for the first, uh, for every 25 mushrooms gathered. I thought I had that perk. Oh, no, I took biscuit diet over it, didn't I? That sounds like me. Oh, well. I'm not even making biscuits. Ugh. Okay, that was not necessarily a great idea either. Four and a half minutes, that will finish. Still don't have the ability to progress any part of it. Uh, again, I'm just going to exhaust the amount of gold I have here. So that it doesn't get stolen from me at a later date. Oh my god. You want mushrooms? I have mushrooms. I can provisions five. Please deliver these provisions. I, I have so many mushrooms. Delivered? Not yet. Hey, now it is. Excellent. A great rate of return for that. A little bit more on the farm fields. Let's expand this. And then the field we need for that is a small farm. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be building a hearth up here. I wonder if I should build a mine actively. Not really utilizing it much, is the thing. Okay, next trade route completed. I'm not going to turn that in just yet. Two and a half minutes until we lose more stuff. Three grain per minute. I mean, I do intend to start baking a lot. Every newcomer group has two additional deal. No, 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 no. Obviously, every newcomer group has two additional villages. Definitely. Let's take... Some more people. There's the trade route. Still complete, still sitting there, still waiting for us. Uh, we also need 20 packs of crops at the moment. So if you could manage to wrangle those, that'd be great. So move the woodcutter's camp off a wee bit. I actually think I'm going to move it far further up and start trying to clear out the perimeter trees here. So let's look at where the hearth would go. The hearth would be sitting... I mean, could even sit right there. 
wouldn't even be a bad position for it. Which means then that the warehouse can be here. And that's important because that will give me the ability to bypass some of the lossy workflow. Using this area. Hey! Oh boy. So I have definitely, definitely, definitely dug myself a big ol' hole. And I am currently using all of the mud that fell in in order to construct some sort of a ladder in order to try and get myself out. But I guarantee that this mud ladder will manage to do the job just as we will. Until then, though, my name is Mr. Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Against the Storm. Serious playlist is up in the top left. You do a recommendation down below. Stream fast. Other names of the people so generously supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays. Utter above the thank tier. And a special thanks this episode to 3D. Hopefully you all have been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you all next time.